President Lincoln sent telegrams to all the northern governors asking them to support in raising troops for the Union. At the time, Governor Erastus Fairbanks was in Ottawa. I was in Montpelier for St. John's for yesterday, besides this picture up there. In the telegram Washington uh, Lincoln sent to Fairbanks, it said, Washington is in grave danger. What may we expect from Vermont? Governor Fairbanks telegram back just six words. It said, Vermont will do its full duty. I'm here to tell you today, with the largest deployment since World War II, that Vermont will do its full duty in Afghanistan. We have the best led, best equipped, best trained fighting force Vermont has ever put on the field of battle. But let me be clear, it's not going to be easy. There will be many challenges. We have been in a constant state of transition regarding the mission in Afghanistan. Much of that is out of our control. You all saw President Obama weeks ago, so you should have an indication that this is something that is concerned the senior leadership of the United States for quite some time. General McChrystal, he's the head general in Afghanistan. He has been instituting many changes. And then add on top of that, the troop increase as ordered by the president, exactly at the same time that Vermont arrives. Consequently, our mission that was primarily going to be training and mentoring the Afghan national security forces has changed. Our brigade now will be Almost all that, all of our brigade will be situated on the eastern side of Afghanistan. Many of our units, and really we employ by units, and when I talk about units, the Vermont units, uh, many of our units will have pieces of ground, or what we call, will be given an area of operations and will be responsible for that area. It's almost exactly like the training we did at Ethan Allen Fire Rings this summer in Europe where you learn how to interact with the sheikhs and the mullahs and the town, it's like the town council. And our people are eminently qualified to accomplish this mission. Some of our people will be in security missions, some will be in administration. So before we were talking about the mission was gonna be training and mentoring. Now I would call that as a secondary mission. We will still, just like all other forces over there, will be training and mentoring the Afghan National Police and the Afghan National Military. But many of our units will have a more traditional combat role as their primary mission. As important as supporting our soldiers in the preparation for the deployment is preparing the families for the deployment. And many of you in this room have actually helped us in that regard. I think we'll all agree. It's not only the smart thing to do to take care of our families, because it allows our soldiers to concentrate on the mission, but it's the right thing. And we have a responsibility to ensure that our families are taken care of throughout the next 12 months, and then the reintegration uh, process uh, to follow. We have a very elaborate family support network that we've put a lot of resources and time and effort into. We're very confident that throughout our network and all the volunteers from around the state of Vermont will offer to help. We will be able to support our families uh, throughout the next year. Many of you have asked me about the state mission. And for those of you who haven't had much interaction with the military department, let me just be very clear here. Our number one mission is to save Vermont lives. We are the 911 force. When local responders are exceeded, 
we have to be ready to roll at the governor's request to save Vermont lives. And we take that as job number one. We'll still have about 2,000 Vermonters left in uniform. And we have been training the Air National Guard that is a highly competent and skilled force at the airport to do some of that mission that was traditionally more of an Army mission. You should know that we still have our helicopters here in the state. We will be sending helicopters to Iraq um, later, but for the most time, we'll have our helicopters in the state. We have our trucks, we have our high water vehicles, we have our medical capability, but most of all, we have 2,000 plus trained and motivated Vermonters who want to help in time of need. Many of you know that a great majority of our people, they join the Guard to serve their neighbors. They, they join specifically because of that state mission. So we will ensure that the state has a robust capability in time of emergency to run our plan. I want to impress upon you one last thought, and that's thank you. Thank so many of you who have been involved in supporting us. Some of you have actually been really involved, and I want you to know how much we sincerely appreciate that. The body has been incredibly supportive as we've prepared for this deployment, and I want to say thank you for that. I'll end with a, a quote because I think it's very apropos, and then uh, if there are any questions of me, I'd like to answer any questions. Most of you all heard um, this story when Calvin Coolidge was president and he came to visit Vermont. And you know, he so loved our state. So when he visited in 1928 to, to see the damage of the 27th flood, he ended up making a famous speech and he had written a poem. And I won't give you the whole poem. I think most of you remember this from school. But I'll just give you a part. He says, I love Vermont for her hills and valleys, her scenery, and invigorating climate, but most of all, for her indomitable people. They are a race of pioneers who have almost begged themselves to serve others. Catch that. They are a race of pioneers who have almost begged themselves to serve others. And I will tell you, that the Vermonters serving today in the Vermont National Guard are just like those pioneers of Calvin Coolidge day. But I'd also argue that many of you in this room are the same type of person that Calvin talked about. He talked about people who are serving others. 